All right, guys. I uh, received a comment about the um, alternator setup and things like that that I was using from the CUCV. And since I haven't figured out this new Google Plus crap, I thought I'd just make a video. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start off by kind of explaining in very brief detail how a CUCV works. Uh, the way it works is, in the 80s, uh, the government was looking for a replacement vehicle for the M880. They had previously been using Dodge for their commercial utility cargo vehicle. And they were looking for a replacement. So they went to General Motors and they got the uh, CUCV M1008, which is basically a K30 that's been upgraded a little bit. A lot of the same components. It's the same J code um, 6.2 motor with the pump, with a little bit of an injection pump alteration. Other than that, it's the exact same motor, nothing special. Um, but one of the things that the government requires is that their military vehicles have the um, the NATO um, charging ability so they can run the NATO save cable and also that they be 24 volt since things like the deuce and a half and a lot of the tanks are operating on 24 volt systems you want your commercial cargo vehicles to be able to jump start those in a, in a situation where that's necessary so um, what GM needed to do was they needed to alter, alter uh, you know, alter their um, charging system a little bit to help facilitate that capacity. And I'd like first to talk about what is 12 volt and what is 24 volt on a CUCV. Now we're talking about the M1008, the M1009, and the M1028. We're not talking about the M1010. That is its own unique animal. And uh, for all intents and purposes, in this video, we're not going to talk anything about the charging system. So just the, the base pickups, the uh, pickup with the front limited slip, and the blazers. That's what we're talking about here. Not the ambulances and not the repair vehicles. So, um, the way that it works is that the only component that's purely 24 volt is the starter. Everything else, the alternators are 12 volt. The glow plugs are 12 volt. The rest of the entire truck is wired 12 volt. And the way they do this is they have a resistor bank. It's located directly behind your air filter. And what it does is it knocks that 24 volt voltage down to 12 volts to run things like your glow plugs and your power shut off solenoid, things like that. Or your fuel shut off solenoid, I should say. Now these military trucks use either Wellman glow plugs or they use the 60G Delcos. They're, they're nothing special as far as glow plugs go. I see that a lot. Oh, you need 24 volt glow plugs. No, you don't. The only vehicle that I know of in this engine family that uses 24 volt style glow plugs is the Humvee. And I'm not even sure about that because I've never worked on one personally, but I've been told that they use a special glow plug. Not on the CUCV. So, how does this whole alternator mess work and how can I convert it to 12 volt? Well, basically, on a standard small block Chevy alternator, which is what G GM, kind of this basic design they've been using forever, you have one plug right here. Uh, it's a spade connector with uh, dual spades. Then you also have one lug, which has a thicker gauge wire that goes back to your uh, wiring harness and eventually back to your battery to charge it. This alternator is grounded to your engine block via the alternator case. So it connects by a bracket to your engine block and then your ground from your battery is attached to your engine block thus completing the ground circuit. So that's how a standard alternator is kind of wired and how it's working. Now the military, what they were using is they're using the heavy duty chassis alternator that you would find on a um, like on a, a bigger vehicle, a medium duty truck or a um, let's say uh, these are very similar to ones that you'd find on the 75 Cadillac with a 500 V8, okay? But because they're, they want to use that 24-volt system, because they need that charging capability, while they're using a 12-volt, 100-amp alternator, they need to wire it differently to achieve that ability. And the way they went about doing this is they used alternators that had this right here. We have two large lugs on the back instead of one. And the smaller of the two is actually the isolated ground. And by that I mean this alternator is not grounded to your engine block via the body of the alternator. 
It's grounded by a separate wire off this terminal that goes to your engine block, uh, completing the ground circuit and allowing the alternator to charge and things like that. So these alternators are still a 12 volt, 100 amp alternator. And if you want to use them as such, instead of as a 24 volt system, all you have to do is remove this white wire with a tracer. Let's see if we can find it. There it is. There's the tracer. Take that off. Pull off this capacitor and run a ground directly here. And that'll make this back to your standard 12 volt, 100 amp alternator. Now, um, this is the passenger side alternator. The driver side alternator is already set up as a standard isolated ground alternator charging a 12 volt system would be. It's got the ground on this lug and then it's got the power on the other. Um, so they're, they're very easy to convert over. It, it's not really a big deal, but I think a lot of people get confused with the 24 volt and 12 volt setups. And, and, uh, and I understand it can be confusing, but through all my research, this is kind of what I've found. Uh, a great PDF is on the internet for download, and it was put out by a company that was retrofitting um, for Brushland Fire Trucks or for the Forest Service or the Park Service, some, some other government agency that gets these trucks after they're done in the military. And they'll tell you how to convert um, the 24 volt to a single alternator 12 volt system or a dual alternator charging two separate battery systems. So one alternator could charge a truck and the other alternator could be now used to charge an auxiliary battery to run a fire apparatus or something like that. So if you have any questions, I definitely consult that PDF file. It really helped me a lot. Um, but in closing, these alternators are the same part number, driver's side or passenger side. They're 12 volt, 100 amp heavy duty alternators. The only difference between them and a civilian version is that we're running an isolated ground instead of a through body ground. That's it. Um, again, the M1010 is the exception to this. It uses a 24-volt system that's completely different. They're kind of a nightmare, and I'm not going to get into them in this video. Um, but I hope this helps somebody that's retrofitting one of these engines into a truck like I am. Um, so you can kind of better understand how the charging system works, and, and maybe not get confused by some of the misinformation that's out there. Uh, I will be making another video. I had been asked questions about Dana 60s and 14 volts, so we're going to make a video on that and uh, kind of go through the rest of the system. Uh, I really appreciate the comment that kind of spurred this video um, because I do realize that there's not too much uh, too much information talking about these alternators in specific and also not talking about these alternators as they're being used in a 12 volt system instead of a 24 volt. So I really appreciate the comment. Um, keep them coming.